Oh, hey there. Sorry, I didn't see you because I was standing inside wearing sunglasses. My new Gotham Sound brand sunglasses. Available now at Gotham Sounds near you. Thanks for tuning in. Okay. Um, anyway, that was fun. Uh, I don't know why I wanted to do that, but thank you for um, watching, tuning into Gotham Sound TV. Um, today, we're here to talk about Tiny Time Code. Um, and, you know, nothing really earth shattering. Um, you know, there's nothing new in the world of, um, of time code other than that there's so much time code. Um, so my name is Nick Houston. I'm going to walk you through some of the various options um, that are available from some of the different vendors, do kind of pros and cons, comparisons for each one, um, so that uh, you can see which one uh, works for you if you're interested in getting into smaller time code stuff. Um, so these are, uh, these are our competitors, or these are the, some of the different options. Um, before we start, I just want to say you know, what these are for. These are all sync boxes. Uh, so the idea behind these is that they're either going to generate time code and you're going to use the time code that's generated uh, to jam time code into something else, a uh, slate, a camera, a recorder, uh, anything that could possibly need, need time code, these could generate the time code for that. Uh, or if you already have a, a master time code box, whether it's, um, whether it's another sync box or it's a recorder, they can also receive and hold that time code uh, from the, the master source and then be able to go from other places. Most of these are designed to be used on camera, but they're really pretty flexible. So if you need to move time code on, on any of the other things we just talked about, you can do that. Uh, okay, so uh, what we're looking at today, and we'll go from the perceived biggest to the perceived smallest, um, which we didn't do any of the math to figure out the, uh, the volume uh, in cubic centimeters or anything like that, so it's all by eye. Uh, but basically, we're going to start out with the uh, Deneke SB4, which is right here. Um, maybe we could get the overhead shot so I can see the Deneke SB4. So there's the Deneke SB4. Uh, we have the ambient uh, nano locket, timecode systems ultrasync, um, Betso TCX2. Then we've got the new Tentacle Sync E and the uh, Mose Gear Qubit. Uh, not pictured here is the Mohs Gear Qubit XL. Uh, I've made a really high quality rendering of what that might look or what that looks like in size. So you can see it's about the same size as the uh, Timecode Systems Ultrasync. And I know you guys are all amazed at my skills as an artist. Uh, having a seven-year-old hold and, and seven-year-old helps you uh, learn to cut things out. Okay, so um, we'll start uh, on the left-hand side with the Deneke SB4. Um, so the Deneke SB4, um, the one thing that's really great about this is that it has a massive screen. So you can turn it on. Um, it's got a pretty intuitive uh, menu system just using kind of, it's kind of like an old VCR remote where you have up, down, left, and right, and then you push in to, uh, to accept something. But as you can see, the time code is displayed really large um, right there. Um, you've got, uh, in terms of connectors, you've got BNC and Limo. So you do Limo for time code in and, and time code out, and powering, uh, and then BNC just as time code out. So you can actually feed two different devices uh, at a time if you'd like. Uh, you can do software updates via USB. Um, and then uh, it's powered off of AAA batteries. So two AAA batteries uh, will run it all day. Uh, so if you're somebody that likes to have uh, removal batteries, likes to be able to control things, doesn't trust rechargeables, um, you know, the Deneke SB4 would be a good, uh, a good box for you. And by the way, if anybody has any questions or anything like that, or want me to go more in depth on something like, uh, on something, uh, please feel free to leave a comment. We do have, have people watching. Uh, okay, so next up, um, we've got the Ambient Nano Locket. Uh, the Nano Locket um, just has three buttons. It's got a power button, a green button, and a red button. And if you read the manual, you can tell what they all do. The power button does turn them on. Uh, does turn it on. Um, so it's, it's a pretty simple uh, user interface. Uh, it's got an integrated battery um, that you charge via USB uh, down the bottom. Uh, the battery lasts 25, 30 hours. Um, it's got Limo for time code in and out. 
Um, but one thing that this has, which a lot of the other ones have as well, as you notice this antenna, this antenna gives it access to um, Ambient's ACN network, uh, which allows it to share time code in between different um, products from Ambient. So if you've got other nano lockets, uh, you can have time code go from this one to the other ones. Or if you've got other Ambient sync boxes, uh, same thing, it can share, they can share time codes so they're all wirelessly in sync uh, 100%. There's no drift or anything like that. Um, same with the slate. So that is the ambient uh, nano locket. And then moving on to the next one, this is the time code systems ultra sync. Uh, this one does have a display uh, and it's got a pretty intuitive uh, user interface. So you can see you've got the time code running there. Uh, this also will do wireless communication using uh, B-Link, um, which is Timecode Systems proprietary um, wireless timecode um, protocol. Uh, so this also has an integrated battery, which you charge via USB-C. Um, and that, again, also lasts like 30, about 30 hours. So all day, if you're, if you're working for more than 30 hours, I think uh, maybe you should be working on a different job because that's crazy and, and not healthy. But maybe you do. I don't know. Um, I am. I should not judge. Um, other thing about the the Time Code Systems um, UltraSync is it uses proprietary connectors. Um, so you know you notice that the previous two had BNC and Limo, uh, which have kind of been the Time Code standards for a while. This uses a um, what's called a DIN connector or a mini DIN. And uh, so there are proprietary cables that you would need to be able to adapt to something else. Um, they do include two uh, DIN connector to BNC adapters. So if you're using um, you know, kind of a normal ENG cam that has BNC in uh, for time code, uh, you can do that. The other cool thing, and this is the only uh, sync box of the, the small variety that does this, is this has... Um, not just time code out, but it also has sync out. So you can actually uh, send time code out to a camera and send gen lock out to a camera so that uh, you make sure that everything is in perfect sync. Because um, sometimes what will happen with gen lock with the cameras, if the camera's internal clock's not running correctly, um, when, it, when you start recording, the camera will take a snapshot of the time code at that time and then run on its own kind of clock. And for longer takes, if the camera's clock is not good, uh, the time code will start to drift because, uh, because the camera's internal clock is running slightly differently. Um, when you apply Genlock, it actually takes the, uh, it changes the camera's internal clock and how fast it runs uh, to mimic what this is outputting. So, anyway, so that's cool. All right, um, next up, we have the Betso TCX2. Um, this is the only other one that takes batteries. Uh, so this one takes one AA battery, um, and one AA battery will, will power it for a long, 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 long time. Uh, I think it's about two days. Um, so you turn it on, it's got a display, it's got a pretty easy um, menu to go into, you go up, down, and then you've got your selection button. Um, one B and C for time code in and out. Uh, and then I'm sure you notice this also has an antenna. So this can, um, this is a transceiver, just like all the other ones. Uh, it can send time code to other units. So whether it's other TCX2s, other Betso sync boxes that have the, uh, the RF en enabled or the new Betso slate. Uh, and it can also receive time code from those things. So pretty, um, pretty flexible there. It's got a nice kind of aluminum uh, casing on it too. So that's the Betso. And moving on to the Tentacle Sync. Uh, seems like Tentacle, is the, they're the people that really started this super tiny time code craze. Um, so this is the new Tentacle Sync E. Uh, so internal battery, run for about 30 hours. I think you're starting to see a theme here. Charges via USB-C. Um, one thing that this has that none of the other one has is this little microphone right here. Okay, so this was really designed with DSLRs in mind so that you could take one cable, come out of the, uh, come out of the mini jack here, plug it into your DSLR, you'd have time code on one track and you'd have a scratch track on the other track. Um, so the, the Synkey actually has a, an upgraded microphone. I wouldn't say that you're going to use it as your, um, as your primary microphone, 
Um, but for a scratch track, uh, it's definitely not bad. The other thing that's interesting about the Syncy is it has Bluetooth. Um, so you notice there's only one uh, switch on the side to turn it on. Uh, and so you do all of your controls using Bluetooth on a, um, on a phone or an iPad or a tablet or however, whatever you can connect to Bluetooth. Now the time code is not transmitted unit to unit uh, via Bluetooth. Um, but you can see the time code in their app. So you can check and see if it's running, if it's, you know, if the time is appropriate, you can see battery telemetry um, and all that fun stuff. Uh, you don't have to use the app to actually, uh, to jam time code. You can just plug it into, um, yeah, you can just plug it into whatever it is your time code master. It'll automatically sense the incoming code and then, um, and then keep running at the same speed with that jam time code. So, Tentacle Sync E, and last and smallest, uh, is the Mose Gear Qubit. Uh, and again, we're you know when we're talking about the features of the Qubit, we're also talking about the features of the Qubit XL. Uh, the only difference between the Qubit and the Qubit XL is size and battery life. Um, so the Qubit, um, the Qubit will run for about four hours on a full charge. Uh, so it's definitely, it's either designed for the quick, like, hey, we need to throw this on a steady cam for one shot, um, or for uh, for something or for something where it can stay plugged in. Um, but, because uh, it's such a short battery life, the Qubit XL, bringing this guy back, uh, lasts about 30 hours. Uh, so, yeah, so that one is, uh, is normal. Uh, one thing that's interesting about this is that the charge, it actually takes a 12 volt DC in. So rather than charging uh, via USB, which is five to seven volts, depending if you're using USB or USB-C, uh, you can actually use an industry standard 12 volt connection. Uh, and it's pretty simple to set up. You just turn it on and you can see um, through a series of pulses if the time code is jammed or not. Uh, and then uh, you have your this switch setting here, which allows you to control, uh, set the frame rate, and all that fun stuff. Um, time code comes in and out here, and that is, and that's the ball game. So those are the kind of quick and dirty. What's different between this, that, and the other thing? Um, are there any questions, Joe? Yeah, we do have one. Um, how do you sync the UltraSync one with DSLRs? Okay, great. Um, so the to sync the UltraSync one with the DSLR, first of all, you need the cable. So you come out of the LTC output. Um, you need a DIN cable uh, to go into uh, eighth inch for the DSLR. And if you want to do a scratch track or anything like that, you can get into all these splitter cables. Um, but basically, you would <clears throat> you would take the LTC out, plug it into the DSLR, and uh, you would want to. And I haven't done this. Um, but you would want to go into, let's see, where is this? Not time code mode. Let's see, time code generator. Let's do local. There is a way, and I'm not sure exactly where it is, and we can, oh, it's set to RF slave. Hang on a second, let me, put, let me set it to TC generator. Local. Okay, don't want that. Time code mode. All right, internal. There we go. And let's go into system settings. So that what I'm looking for right now, just to just to tell you, is um, DSLRs typically have a mic level input. So we want to uh, we want to make sure that this and time code is typically at line level. So you want to make sure that if you're plugging into a DSLR that you don't have a mic line mis mismatch and you need to turn down the output level of your um, of your time code box. So let's just see if there is anything in system settings that allows us to do that. Uh, LED brightness, LTC output level. There you go. So standard level. It's set to right now. You'd want to set it to low level to output to a DSLR, and that's the same thing uh, with any of these. Anything else, Joe? Uh, no questions, but a uh, little shout out to uh, uh, Jason Cupick, who is uh, kind of monitoring on the uh, the live stream. So thank you for uh, answering some questions there too. Oh, Jason's the man. 
What's up, dude? Um, bring by your dog. Your dog is ridiculously cute and you're cool to hang out with too. Um, okay. Do they all, <clears throat> sorry, do they all transmit on uh, 2.4 gigahertz? So none of these actually, so the question is whether or not they trans, what do they transmit on? Uh, none of these the trans, clock. yeah, none of these transmit in 2.4 gigahertz. They're actually all in 900 megahertz. So Ambient ACN, uh, the B-Link protocol for timecode systems and Betso's own proprietary uh, is 900 megahertz. The range, the theoretical range line of sight is pretty astounding. It's about 300 meters. Um, so, you know, if you're in a uh, football stadium, for instance, um, and you are, you know, within sight of the transmitter, you should be able to get timecode uh, no problem. All right. Anything else? Fantastic. Well, thank you for tuning in. Uh, and if you have other questions, you can leave them in the comments on the YouTube video or the Vimeo video or, you know, however, uh, you can always contact us. Um, coming up next, coming up soon, uh, we have a tax seminar on Sunday, February 18th with Nancy, with Nancy Adams, who is a CPA. Uh, it, uh, tickets are available uh, if you want to come to it in New York City or you can always watch it online. Um, it's, it's filling up uh, pretty quickly, so if you want to come, uh, please get a ticket. It's free. Um, also coming up uh, this Sunday, gosh, Sunday, Sunday, I'll be there. Um, January 28th in Dallas um, is the uh, fifth annual, wow, fifth annual Lone Star Mixer Mixer. Um, so there'll be a lot of different vendors there, Zaxcom, Sound Devices, uh, I believe DPA, um, Wizicom. And, uh, and, and more, and of course, Gotham Sound will be there with a bunch of little stuff and swag and giveaways. So if you're in the, uh, if you're near Texas and you're near Dallas, uh, come on by and say hello. Uh, as always, you can watch this video and others in our video archives at gothamsound.tv. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter for all of the latest sound, location sound news. And if you have any ideas uh, for live streams that you would like to see us do or videos you'd like to see us do or any questions, uh, please email us at info at gothamsound.com. Thank you so much for watching and have a fantastic and sunny day.